Oxford Grammar for Schools Level Five by Rachel Godfrey, published and copyright Oxford University Press, 2014. CD three. Unit twenty one. Twenty one point one. Mine is bigger than yours. But mine was cheaper than yours. This was the finest in the shop. And this was the cheapest in the shop. I'm very pleased with my cake. And I'm just as pleased as you. Twenty-one point two. I chose the Cellus Star because at two and a half kilos, it was the lightest telescope in the shop. One. I had to buy the Astro Seeker. Really, it was only sixty-five pounds. You can't get a cheaper telescope than that these days. Two. I bought the Sky Searcher. I was very pleased to find it at this price. It's usually more expensive. Three. I chose the Sky Searcher because it's better for people with more experience, like me. Four. I wasn't interested in the Astro Seeker because it isn't as powerful as the Sky Searcher or the Celestar. Five. I bought an Astro Seeker. My son liked the Celestar because the other telescopes weren't as shiny as that one. He's only five. Six. I bought the Astro Seeker. Because I'm just as interested in looking at animals as I am at looking at the moon. Twenty-one point three. One. Run faster. Two. Blow harder. Three. Walk more slowly. Four. Speak louder. Five. Talk more quietly, please. Six. Look at it more closely. Twenty-one point four. What's the difference between life for people in my country today and life for people in my country fifty years ago? Are people happier now than before? Hmm. Well, I think people work harder today than they did in the past. People seem to work all the time now in my country, at the weekend and in the evenings, as well as during the week. Communication is very different nowadays compared to fifty years ago. People communicate more now. They don't communicate better. They just say the same things to lots of different people, by email, on the phone, on the internet, and so on. I suppose people communicate more openly now than in the past, because it's easier and more normal for people to talk about their feelings than it used to be. We eat a wider variety of foods in my country these days. Food from all around the world, but do we eat better than we used to? I don't think so. People used to eat fresh food every day, but now they eat more convenience food, like takeaways and frozen food, and it isn't as good for you as fresh food. Life is more comfortable now. That's certainly true. There are lots of things that make life easier, and healthcare and medicine is much better now. But are we happier now? No, I don't think so. I think people were as happy and sad fifty years ago as they are today. They just found their happiness in different ways. Unit twenty-two. Twenty-two point one. Number one. 
The soup smells horrible. Number two. The soup smells lovely. One. Number one. The boy is asleep. Number two. The boy is awake. Two. Number one. The flag itself is blue with a round design of two rings in the middle. The inner ring is black, and the outer ring is red. Number two. The flag itself is blue, with a round design of two rings in the middle. The inner ring is red, and the outer ring is black. Three. Number one. That man looks bored. Number two. That man looks boring. Four. Number one. She's the only girl. Number two. She's alone. Five. Number one. He looks frightening. Number two. He looks frightened. Twenty-two point two. How was the film? It was brilliant, and the music was fantastic. One. How was the restaurant? The service was terrible, but the food was amazing. Two. How was your time in hospital? Not great. But the doctors and nurses were very kind. Three. How was your flight? The flight itself was smooth, but my seat was very uncomfortable. Four. How was your holiday? The weather was disappointing, but the hotel was great. Five. Did Charlie look smart? Yes. His trousers were clean and his shirt was ironed. Six. How was the exam? Not too bad, but some of the questions were confusing. Seven. How was your trip? It's a beautiful city, but the shops were very expensive. Twenty-two point three. Hi, Kate. You know it's my birthday next weekend. Yeah. Well, my parents have just bought me a new tent. Would you like to go camping with me? That would be fun. Any ideas where you'd like to go? I've looked on the internet and have found a couple of possible campsites. Let's have a look. Here's the first one. It looks quite nice. There are a lot of trees and it's not very big. Hmm. The place looks quite nice, but it's very small. There aren't many facilities. Have a look at the shop. It's really small. You can't buy very much. But it's very cheap, and it's also quite near, so it would be easy to get there.、Uh, you're right. It's quite nearby, and that would be good. What about the other campsite? Okay, here we are. This one's very big. There are hundreds of tents. <laughs> it's very big, but I think it still looks quite nice. I agree. It does look quite nice, and there's a really good shop. How much does it cost? Hmm. It isn't very cheap. Look. No, it's not very cheap, but it has got good facilities, and it's also quite close to here. What do you think? I don't mind. They both look okay. I prefer the second one. Great, let's book it. Unit twenty-three, twenty-three point one. Do you ever go to the cinema on your own, Julia? Me? No, no, I don't do that at all. Conversation one. How often do you travel by train, Henry? Oh, I don't know. Maybe once or twice a year. Not very often. Conversation two. Do you ever listen to music in bed, Tim? Yes, I do that all the time, every night before I go to sleep.
Conversation three. Do you go running every day, Vicky? Not every day, no, but most days, yeah. I go a lot. Conversation four. Isabel, do you ever write a letter to someone, or do you only write emails? Hmm, it's not something that I do a lot, but yeah, from time to time I write a letter. Conversation five. James, how often do you watch the news on TV? Quite a lot, really. Four or five times a week, maybe more. Yeah, that is quite a lot. I hardly ever do. Twenty-three point two. Conversation one. How often do you watch a film on TV? Not often. About two or three times a year. I prefer going to the cinema. How about you, Ed? Every day. I love films, and there's always something to watch on the film channel. And you, Daisy? Sometimes, but not very often. I usually watch other things on TV. Not films. Conversation two. Have you ever fallen asleep on a bus or a train? Yes, I've often done that. Fortunately, I always wake up before I have to get off. <laughs> have you? No, I've never done that. What about you, Frank? Yes, I've occasionally done it, but only on a train. I've never fallen asleep on a bus. Conversation three. Do you always have breakfast, Martin? No, not always, but I usually do. Do you, Carrie? Yes, I do. Always, I get very hungry in the morning. And you? No, I hardly ever have breakfast. I just don't feel like eating in the morning. Twenty-three point three. Did they work quickly? No, they worked slowly. One. Is Sam in? No, he's out. Two. Is Amy upstairs? No, she's downstairs. Three. Can you help me now? No, but I can help you later. Four. Do you play chess well? No, I play terribly. Five. Shall we sit indoors? No, let's sit outdoors. Six. Did you come here by car? No, we came on foot. Twenty-three point four. A solar eclipse happens every two years. One. You should stay indoors in a thunderstorm. That's the best place to be. Two. The moon circles the Earth about once every twenty-eight days. Three. Do you need to relax? You should breathe slowly. Four. An attic is a room under the roof. So you would find it upstairs. Five. Louis Blériot travelled across the English Channel by plane in 1909. He was the first person to do this. Six. The Oscars, the Academy Awards ceremony, takes place in the USA every spring. Seven. The first Olympic Games took place many years ago, more than two thousand years ago, in fact. Eight. When the score says pianissimo, a musician should play very quietly. Unit twenty-four, twenty-four point one. Conversation one. It's so beautiful. The houses look so small. Conversation two. What's happened here? I don't know. It's such a mess. Conversation three. 
Why are there so few people here? Maybe because it's so windy. Conversation four. We've been here such a long time now. I know. I'm getting so fed up. Conversation five. Why have you got so many apples? Because I've got so many friends. Conversation six. She's such a young girl, but she plays golf so well. It's amazing. She's already got so many trophies. Twenty-four point two. He's got such a kind face. One. They were so friendly. Two. That's so funny. Three. You did that so carefully. Four. There's such a lot of smoke. Five. Is it such a problem? Six. That's so true. Seven. It was such a nice day. Eight. That's such good news. Nine. You run so fast. Ten. I've got so many ideas. Revision seven, R seven point one. Listen and choose the correct answer A, B, or C. What did the man do? So what did you do? You must have been so scared. No, not really. I just walked downstairs slowly and called the police. I think I was so surprised I didn't know what else to do. One. Why didn't the girl phone yesterday? Sorry, I didn't phone last night. That's okay. I was so tired that I just fell asleep on the sofa with the TV on. Were you feeling ill? No, no, I was fine, just very sleepy. Do you feel better today? Not really. I'm not as tired as I was yesterday, but now my tooth's really painful. I think I need to see a dentist. Maybe that's why you were so tired yesterday. Yes, maybe. Two. What's the man describing? And next we have this rather unusual old pot. It is in fact a three hundred year old metal cooking pot, and if you look closely, you'll see that it's even got the remains. Three. Which sign is the woman talking about? Hey, slow down. Why? What do you mean? Didn't you see that sign? You shouldn't be driving so fast in this area. You're right. Sorry. Four. How does Libby feel about playing tennis with Jamie? Do you want to play tennis sometime, Libby? I don't know, Jamie. Maybe. You're not sure. I really don't play as well as you. It wouldn't be very interesting for you. But look, I can't run as fast as usual because of my knee. I wouldn't be such a frightening opponent, would I? <laughs> Well, okay. We could have a game sometime. Maybe you can help me get better. Show me how to hit the ball more powerfully. Things like that. Five. Which is Henry's calendar? How did you get on in April, Henry? Did you manage to do your exercises every day? Well, I always thought about them. I never forgot about them. That's a good start. But I'm afraid I didn't always do them. Okay. So, how often did you do them? I did them more often than in March. Quite often, really. I reckon it was about. R seven point two. You will hear a fitness coach describing physical activities. Choose the correct answer: A, B, 
or C. Hi, I'm Heidi. I'm a very experienced fitness coach, and I'm going to tell you about some cardiovascular activities, physical activities that are really good for your heart and lungs. Are you bored with the usual suggestions for a good cardiovascular workout, like running and swimming? There are plenty of other things you can try, and here are three of them. The first is skipping. Perhaps you remember jumping with a skipping rope with your friends when you were a child. Well, these days, skipping's becoming more and more popular as a fitness activity. It's a great way to make your arms and legs stronger, and it's such a cheap and simple way to exercise too. All you need is some space, preferably outdoors, and a skipping rope that's the right length. If you stand on one end of the rope and pull it up, the handle should reach to your chest. There are different kinds of jumps and steps that you can try, and with a regular skipping program, you should find yourself getting fit quickly. A word of warning, though: skipping is a high-impact sport. It isn't the best activity for people with weak knees or elbows. Spinning is another form of exercise that you could try. This is basically cycling on fixed bicycles in a gym with a group of other spinners. The instructor uses music and well-chosen words to motivate you through the session. A small computer attached to the bike shows you how fast you're cycling and how much energy you're using. Of course, spinning's never going to be as exciting as cycling outdoors in the fresh air. But the main advantage is that the instructor will guide you through a carefully planned routine, and of course, it never rains at the gym, so you'll always be able to go to your spin class. The third activity you could try is aqua or water aerobics. It's similar to traditional aerobics in which you move in time to music, but you do the class in a swimming pool. The water makes the movements more difficult, so you have to work harder. At the same time, the movements are slower and gentler than in a normal aerobics class, because the water supports your body. For this reason, water aerobics is good for anyone who has problems with their knees and elbows. Unit twenty-five, twenty-five point one. One. Hello. Hi, it's James here. Is that Tim? Yes, it is. Could I speak to Leo, please? He's just gone to the shops, but he'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I'll call back in ten minutes. Could you tell him I phoned, Tim? Yes, of course. Bye then. Bye. Two. Oscar Webster is one of the most important writers of the twentieth century. He was born in London on the first of January, nineteen forty-nine. In the summer of that year, his parents moved to India. Oscar spent the first. Three. So, Bella, your train is at quarter past one. Is that right? Yes. Well, once again, thank you very much for coming here this morning. That's okay. It's been very interesting. And we'll speak again on Friday. Is morning or afternoon better for you? Friday afternoon would be good for me. Okay, I'll call you then to talk more about your September performances. Okay, I'll put all of this in an email this afternoon, and then. Four. Hello, is that Angie? No, it's Libby. Oh, it's Kathy here. Could I speak to Angie? She's not here at the moment, I'm afraid. She's away for a few days. She's coming back on Saturday. Ah,、oh, I was just thinking, I'd really like to come and stay in the last week of May. Do you know if that'll be possible? I don't know, I'm afraid. No problem. I'll call again at the weekend. Okay. Bye then. Bye. Twenty-five point two. Carrots grow below the ground. One. 
Your index finger is next to your thumb. Two. Pearls grow inside oyster shells. Three. Your heart is in front of your lungs. Four. Dundee is in Scotland. Five. The giant clam is a shellfish, which lives in the sea among coral structures. Six. It's not a good idea to stand against a wall that has a wet paint sign on it. Twenty-five point three. How many ducks are walking along the river bank? One. What colour is the frog that's jumping out of the river? Two. How many people are walking towards the ice cream van? Three. What colour is the cable car that's going into the cloud? Four. How many people are walking around the lake? Five. How many people are jumping into the lake? Unit twenty six, twenty six point one. She worked as a nurse in the nineties. One. Here's a photo of my uncle. He looks like a businessman. But he's actually an artist. Two. I'd like to talk to you as a friend. Is that okay? Three. The test was quite difficult, as I expected. Four. He'd like to get a job as a tour guide next summer. Five. She sings beautifully, like a bird. Listen. Six. We used a sharp stone as a knife. It worked very well. Seven. Let's get her some flowers, like roses or tulips. Eight. This perfume smells like flowers and vanilla. It's very nice. Twenty-six point two. Here are the answers to the natural world quiz, so get ready to find out how many your team got correct. For the first three questions, we're thinking about continents. According to scientific discoveries, it seems that no horses lived in Australia during the Ice Age, so Australia is the first answer. There are deserts in every continent except Europe. And spiders, these live in every continent except Antarctica. So if you're not a fan of spiders, then that's the place to live. The next three questions are about losses to the natural world due to human activity, deforestation, cutting down large numbers of trees for industry, has resulted in the loss of some bird species, and some species of animals too. Some kinds of tiger have been lost forever because of hunting, and in the future, some species of shark may become extinct because of overfishing, the food industry taking too many fish out of the sea. In other words, you need a season and a time of day for the next two answers. Turtles, like many animals, hibernate during the winter. And most birds fly during the night when they are migrating, despite the fact that they usually fly during the day at other times. Tails now, and we're thinking about what different animals use them for. Now, some lizards use their tail as a weapon to protect themselves against attackers, and of course, all fish use their tail as a propeller to help them swim. Like the propeller at the back of a boat. How long do different animals live for? Chickens, about twenty years. Rhinos, about fifty years. And the giant tortoise, 
They often live until they're an amazing 150 years old. Finally, carnivores, herbivores and omnivores. What are they? Well, herbivores only eat plants and carnivores only eat meat. So, omnivores is the answer to question 14. Omnivores eat plants and meat. Most carnivores and omnivores have big teeth for eating meat. But things aren't always as they seem in the natural world. With their big teeth, hippos look like carnivores, but they are actually herbivores. And you wouldn't expect a plant to be a carnivore, but the Venus flytrap is. Its leaves are a bit like a mouth. They close when a fly walks on them, and the plant eats the fly. The final answer, then, is carnivores. And that's the end of the quiz. How many correct answers did you get? Unit 27 27.1 What happens to your luggage when you travel by plane? Here's how the system works. A special tag is attached to every piece of luggage at departures. All the bags and suitcases are checked by a machine. The luggage is sorted and loaded onto a cart for the flight. All the bags and suitcases for the flight are loaded onto the aeroplane. The luggage is unloaded at arrivals. It is collected from the carousel by the passengers. 27.2 What's all that stuff? I was given this old box that belonged to my great-grandfather. He was a photographer. Wow! What kind of photos did he take? He was a journalist, so he was often sent to different countries and he took all kinds of photos. A lot of his professional photos were sold by one of my aunts last year. But this box was kept in the family because the pictures are more personal. Oh, right. Look at these photos. I'm pretty sure they were taken in Japan. He loved Japan, and he was offered a good job there, but he didn't take it. I don't know why. 27.3 Here are the answers to the general knowledge quiz. The first Olympic Games were held in Athens, in Greece. Chess was first played in India in the 6th century. Glass is mostly made of silica. Denim jeans were first worn in the 19th century. Akan is an African language which is spoken in Ghana. Most of the world's oranges are grown in A, Brazil. Brazil is also the world's biggest coffee producer, so the answer for number six is C. Shooting stars are actually meteor showers. They are usually seen about 100 kilometres above the Earth. This bridge, the Rialto Bridge in Venice, Italy, was built in the 16th century, in 1591. Fireworks were first invented by the Chinese in the 7th century. The first skyscraper officially recognised as a building more than ten storeys high, was built in the USA, in the city of Chicago, in 1885. Unit 28. 28.1 1. It'll be put in a cup of hot water. Then it'll be taken out and thrown in the bin. 2. It'll be borrowed, it'll be read, it'll be returned to the library. 3. They'll be washed, they'll be ironed, they'll be worn again. 4. He'll be interviewed and he'll be photographed. 5. They'll be peeled. 6. It'll be cut into pieces. 
it'll be made into a dress. 28.2 We might be given some books. 1. It might be used as a bag. 2. He might be asked to give a speech. 3. You might not be met at the airport. 4. They might get taken to a restaurant. 5. She might not get offered the job. 6. It might not be announced today. Twenty eight point three. It will probably be left where it is, but it might be put in a garden. Is it the flower? No, no, no. It might be taken inside a house and used to keep a door open. Is it the old boot? No. It probably won't be moved anywhere, but it might be put in a river and used as a step. Hmm. Is it the... Yes, it is! <laughs> Unit 29. 29.1 1. Have you had your hair cut? 2. I've had my shoes polished. 3. She's having her eyes tested. 4. I might have my feet measured. 29.2 It had been a busy morning. I'd been to the shoe shop, where I'd just had my feet measured for the first time in ages. And then I'd been to the hairdressers, where I'd had my hair cut and styled in a new way. Then, when I was riding my bike home through the park, I rode straight into an enormous rock that was lying on the path. I flew off my bike and over the handlebars and landed on the path on my right arm, which was really painful. I managed to push my bike home with my good arm, but my bad arm was still really hurting. So Mum took me straight to hospital, where I had it x-rayed. Fortunately, the doctor told me it wasn't broken, but I had it bandaged by a nurse, and they told me to rest it for a few weeks. The front wheel of my bike is quite badly damaged, but I'm having it repaired tomorrow. I think I didn't see the rock in the park because my hair was over my eyes. But Mum's worried that I might have a problem with my eyes. She says I have to have my eyes tested before I go on my bike again. Revision 8, R8.1 You will hear a head teacher welcoming pupils back to school. For each question, choose the correct answer, A, B or C. Welcome back to school, everyone. I hope you've all had a really good holiday. Have you noticed what's different about the school? Classrooms B9 and B10 were knocked down at the beginning of the summer holidays and three new classrooms were built in their place. I'm sure you'll agree that the new buildings look much better. Some bad news next, I'm afraid. Two windows in C Block were broken during the holidays. Someone was seen running away from the school, but nobody was caught. Fortunately, nothing was stolen from the school, and the windows were fixed the next day. However, it was a very wet night, and some computer equipment was damaged by the rain. We will replace the equipment as soon as we can. More good news now. Work is continuing on the new swimming pool, which will eventually be used for swimming lessons by everyone in the school. Most of the work has now finished and the roof is complete. I hope the pool will be filled by the end of next week. Thank you to everyone who entered the Holiday Short Story Competition. My colleagues and I have enjoyed reading your work. 
The winners of the holiday short story writing competition will be announced on Friday, and the winning stories will be printed in the school magazine next month. Over the next few weeks, everyone in the school is invited to have their eyes tested by the school nurse. This is a free service. Pupils who don't want to take this opportunity must bring a letter from their parents. Please remember to keep bringing old plastic bottles to school. They are taken to the recycling centre, and for large numbers of bottles, we get money for the school. Finally, everyone. I'd like... R eight point two. You will hear a museum tour guide talking to a group of visitors. Complete the information. Use one word in each space. Good morning. Welcome to the Museum of Film. We have all sorts of things for you to see here, including two fabulous collections, three cinemas, and a small working film studio. Before you enter, I'm just going to take a few minutes of your time to tell you some things about the museum. Can you see this small statue here? This was given to the Museum of Film by Prince Leo in October 1989 when he opened it. All the work here is done by volunteers. Unfortunately, in May 2006, the museum had to close due to lack of funds. In January 2007, the government started funding the museum, and we were able to open again. We rely on this government funding as well as public donations, so please give generously if you can. We hope the museum can stay open for years to come. We regularly have directors in residence here at the museum. These are directors who come and work at the museum for six months. Have you seen the film Open Door? This was made by Anna Lake when she was working here as the director in residence. Our current director is Jim Bennett. You can hear a talk by him at eleven o'clock this morning. It's called The Way I See It. Our famous collection of wax models of film stars is on the second floor. For a small fee, our photographer will take your photo with your favourite star. We have a small studio here where you can try being a film director. Your mini film will be edited, and all day the mini films will be shown on the screen in the museum cafe. At the end of the year, some of these films will be chosen to be included in the People's Film Project. You never know; your film might get chosen. In the basement, we have a new exhibition called "The Real Thing." This is a collection of clothes and accessories which actors actually used in famous films. You'll be surprised at some of the things we have. One more thing before you begin the tour: as you know, we have three working cinemas here from different times of film history. I'm afraid Cinema Twenty One will be closed between ten o'clock and midday today, while a new screen is installed. We're sorry for the inconvenience. Thank you very much for listening. Enjoy your visit. Unit Thirty, Thirty Point One. One. I've just ironed them for you. Can you put them away now? Two. Look, I got this today. They were giving out free samples at the shop. Three. Someone needs to come and take them away. Four. What do you think? Does it go with this shirt? Five. It was really bad. It took two hours for them to put it out. Thirty point two. What time did you get up today? One. Do these shoes go with these trousers? Two. What's been going on here? Three. Well, go on. What happened next? Four. 
When you finish with that paint, can you put it away, please? Five. He should take up a new hobby. Six. You get on well with Ed, don't you? Seven. Could you give out these worksheets, please? Eight. Do you want to take your coat off? Nine. Hey, that's mine. Give it back. Ten. Well, do you want to keep trying or do you give up? Revision nine, R nine point one. For each question, listen and choose the correct answer A, B, or C. When is Oscar's birthday? How old's Oscar going to be next week? Thirteen. Is his birthday on the twelfth? No, the fourteenth. Are you going to do anything special on his birthday? No, not actually on his birthday. But the family's going to meet on the thirteenth, and I'll cook his favourite meal. Oh, that's nice. He'll like that. One. What is the special offer in this shop? Those shirts were forty pounds, so they must be twenty pounds now. That's good. I could buy two. Wait a minute. You don't know they're twenty pounds. But everything's half price, isn't it? No. You have to look for a blue cross on the label. If there's a blue cross, then the item is half price. Oh, right. Two. Which clothes does Kate want? What have you got there, Kate? Some clothes. Vicky gave them to me. She doesn't want them, so she said I can have them if I want. Ah,、oh, lucky you! The jumper's nice. Yes, it'll go with my new trousers. What about this skirt? It's rather long. I'll give it back, I think.、Mm. Oh, this scarf's pretty. Yes, it is, isn't it? I don't usually like scarves, but I might wear it sometimes. Three. Where did the man leave his glasses? Oh no! Where are my glasses? Did you have them in the car? Yes, I needed them when I was looking at the map. And did you have them in the cafe? Yes, that's it. I took them off after I'd looked at the menu and didn't put them back on again. You didn't put them in your pocket, did you? No, I didn't. They're on the table. Oh. We'll have to go back. Four. Which way will Anna have to go today? We need some more paint. I'll be driving past the superstore when I go to the cinema, so I can stop to get some then. That road's closed at the moment. Is it? How will I get to the cinema then? There's a diversion. You'll see the signs. You have to go round the hospital and over the railway bridge. Oh right. And that will bring me to the superstore. Yes. Five. What result did the boy get? I'm glad I passed the exam, but I wish I'd got over sixty percent. R nine point two. You will hear a fitness coach talking to a group of people. Listen and complete the information. Use one word in each space. Do you want to get fit? Would you like to make new friends? At the Drayton Fitness Centre, you can do just that. We offer a fantastic range of modern gym equipment for you to use, as well as an Olympic-sized swimming pool. There are different fitness classes every day of the week. And our qualified fitness instructors will help you get the best from your time at the centre by preparing a personalised fitness program for you. And we believe in our personalised fitness program so much that we make this promise to you: if you're not fitter and healthier after three months with us, we'll give you three months free membership. How's that for a deal? So, what about prices? 
Regular membership, which includes use of the gym and swimming pool at any time, will cost you just six pounds a week. If you have regular membership and you want to do a fitness class, you'll pay an extra three pounds per class. Or you might be interested in our Sports Plus pass. This costs thirty pounds a month, and the price includes everything: use of the gym, the swimming pool, and as many fitness classes as you want to or can do. At the Drayton Fitness Centre, we look after our members' health very carefully. If you decide to join, you must have a health check before you begin any activities with us. Health checks are done at the Drayton Medical Centre, which is located opposite the fitness centre. A professional health adviser will give you a full medical consultation, and this will include having your blood pressure checked. Well, I hope I've persuaded you to think about getting membership with us. One last thing I have to say. The gym will be closed next week because we're in the middle of a modernisation program. It's a very exciting program, but we do understand the inconvenience it creates. To compensate for this, we can offer you a 25% discount if you join today.